Mr. Overton from the Hartford City Council. We have our mayor, Chief Larry Wynn, is here with us. We had a long time friend from District 3, and I just thought out today that she is vice mayor, that's Kimberly Poe. And from District 2, we have Carlos Monzo. Monzo. Hi, Carlos. I don't know, is Michelle Doe here? I don't see a hand being lifted up. Okay, that's fine. She's actually been to, to many of these. And Tree Tom is going to hopefully stop by today, but we'll, we'll see. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, da, da, da. This year, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of our Memorial Park. This is our 50th year having a Memorial Day service, and it's my 20th year hosting it. We love doing this service and are honored that you make this a part of your day. As many of you know, there are three major holidays for the military. Here's a test, though. I, wanted, I say this every year, but I want to see how many of you remember it. Or you probably learned this in high school. Here's a test. Shout out the answer if you know it. This military holiday recognizes people currently serving in the military. Armed Forces, yeah, that was just last week. Uh, this holiday celebrates all veterans. That's an easy one, huh? And then the third one is also kind of easy because it's today to remember and honor the brave men and women who died while in service to the country. This past Saturday, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and other groups placed flags on the graves of veterans laid to rest in our park. You'll see them all throughout the park. They're everywhere. All of these courageous men and women deserve our gratitude for their service, and some of them quite literally gave their lives for our country. And they are what today is all about. And we've got quite a service plan today uh, in order to honor them. It'll be a little different because, for example, we have a first time speaker at this ceremony and we expect a flyover at some point during the service or after or possibly any second now. We really are not sure when that's going to happen. But let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I love this part. Here to help us are the members of Girl Scout Troop 3318. And yeah, please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge oh. <laughs> And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta check my program here. Twentieth time and I'm still not sure about the order. Okay, we should let the band oh the band is in place. Good. We should have the national anthem now. Gregory, are you ready? And the band? Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in the air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the
Would you bow with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are continually faithful to us, just as you were faithful to those who died for us, granting freedom, hope, and privileges. We all know you were on that battlefield comforting our brothers and sisters who made this very moment possible for us today. We offer a collective thank you for your abiding presence and watch care. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Okay, pl please sit down, yeah. This morning, we are very pleased to have as our keynote speaker, renowned author and journal journalist, Chris Epting. After leaving a successful career in advertising, Chris had a weekly column in the Los Angeles Times for 10 years, then wrote for the Huffington, or I think at the same time, wrote for the Huffington Post for six years and appeared in dozens of other outlets, TV and radio, and traveling extensively. He's the author of 45 books about people like James Dean, Jimi Hendrix, John Oates, and the Rolling Stones, and several books specific to Orange County. Uh, you should go online and, and check them out with subjects as diverse as baseball, landmarks, rock and roll, and the Orange County Fair. He even has a book on the life of our local Olympic athlete, Shirley Babishoff, who I forgot about, but she was the most successful Olympian of her time. But today, he has something very special just for us. I'm so excited and honored to introduce to you for the first time ever at our Memorial Day service, our keynote speaker, Mr. Chris Epting. Thank you very much. What an honor to be here today. I, I normally will get up and I want to make sure, I think our flyover's here. Good timing, let's enjoy this. Bravo. Nothing like it, right? With that, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, as we gather here today on this solemn occasion of Memorial Day, we're not only honoring the brave men and women who have served our country with unwavering dedication and sacrifice, we're also connecting with a history that runs deep within the fabric of our nation. It's a history that intertwines the past with the present, forging a bond that transcends time and space. It's intriguing to note the parallels between the origins of Memorial Day and the rich historical tapestry of Orange County. Did you know that the roots of Memorial Day can be traced back to a Civil War soldier who sought to honor his fallen soldiers? And right here in Orange County, a place often associated with sunshine and surf, the echoes of the Civil War actually resound in unexpected ways. In fact, we are surrounded by the history. Not, from, not far from here in Huntington Beach, Civil War veterans once gathered in the early 1900s to reminisce and honor their shared experiences. Many of these soldiers, drawn to California by its promise of warmth and tranquility after the ravages of war, found a new home in this idyllic setting and became an integral part of this community. Did you know that more than 800 Civil War soldiers rest in eternal peace right here in Orange County soil, their stories etched in the very land we stand upon today. And as we stand here in this hallowed cemetery, surrounded by the quiet dignity of the fallen, did you realize that among us lie the final resting places of 24 Civil War veterans? Their presence, though silent, speaks volumes about the legacy they have bequeathed to us a legacy of courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment to the ideals of freedom and justice. Not far from here on Beach Boulevard lies Good Shepherd Cemetery, where 14 Civil War soldiers are laid to rest, including James Talbert. It's worth noting that Talbert's son, Tom, after whom the street is named, is a significant figure in our local history. 
Tom Talbert, a founding father of what would become Fountain Valley, played a, played a pivotal role in shaping not only Huntington Beach, but also much of the surrounding area. His legacy lives on in the very streets we walk today, a testament to his enduring impact in our community. As we make our way down Beach Boulevard, drawing closer to the serene vista of the ocean, we approach the final resting place of another extraordinary individual, a hero of World War II. This valiant soldier, affectionately referred to as Old Sarge, garnered renown for acts of unparalleled bravery and unwavering dedication in the theater of war. Born in 1941, how could this soldier have achieved such heroic feats during World War II? You may wonder, the answer may surprise you. The soldier is in fact not a human at all, but a loyal and courageous canine named Major von Luckner III. Known for his unwavering loyalty and keen instincts, embodying, uh, I'm sorry, Major Van Luckman III served as a member of the Marine Corps Devil Dogs, embodying the very essence of courage and selflessness on the battlefield. His actions in the heat of battle saved the lives of nine comrades, earning him the prestigious Purple Heart and the esteemed Silver Star. His story serves as a poignant reminder of the enduring impact that one brave soul, whether on two legs or four, can have in shaping the course of history and inspiring generations to come. Sarge was buried in Huntington Beach in 1961 with full military honors, including a 15-gun salute. Orange County boasts an even broader and richer tapestry of military history woven into its very fabric. Irvine Park was under Army control in 1942, while Peters Canyon served as an Army training base during that time. The Balsa Chica Military Reservation came into being when the government acquired the Balsa Chica Gun Club property in 1942. Coastal defense operations were stationed at Crystal Cove State Park. Additionally, the Santa Ana Army Air Base, Miles Square Field in Fountain Valley, and Los Alamitos Naval Air Station, the El Toro Marine Corps Air Station, and various other notable sites further enrich our county's military heritage. Noteworthy among these is a German prisoner of war camp situated at Garden Grove Boulevard and Palm Street right nearby where more than 1,000 soldiers were held during World War II. They picked oranges by day and they were shipped home after the war. What makes this tale even more intriguing is what transpired after the war's end. Surprisingly, a number of these former German prisoners returned to Orange County, they once called home, captivated by the allure of our county to raise their families. These individuals, once adversaries on the battlefield, now found themselves drawn back to a place that held an indelible mark on their hearts and minds. As we reflect on Orange County's deep military roots and the sacrifices made by generations of service members today, it's impossible for me to not think about those I've been honored to know personally during my time as an author and journalist. One individual stands out in particular, the late Vi Cowden. Vi Cowden, an American aviator of extraordinary talent and bravery, served as a member of the Women Air Force Service Pilots, WASPs, during World War II. As one of the pioneering women who made up the more than 1,000 WASPs, Vi belonged to a select group of trailblazers who shattered barriers and defied expectations by taking to the skies to fly American military planes. The WASPs played a vital role in the war effort, ferrying aircraft, conducting test flights, and providing essential support to the armed forces. Despite facing countless challenges and obstacles, Vi Cowden and her fellow WASPs demonstrated unwavering determination and skill, proving themselves as capable and fearless aviators in service to their country. I recall being present to welcome Vi around 15 years ago as she piloted a P-51 Mustang into Long Beach Airport at the remarkable age of 90. When I inquired about her feelings afterward, she responded with a smile saying, I would gladly serve my country again today if given the chance. Then there's the remarkable story of another local hero, Chris Carr. Born Christos Cabarrus in Manchester, New Hampshire, Carr's journey to heroism began when he joined the Army from his hometown in October 1942. By October 1944, he was serving as a sergeant in Company L, 337th Infantry Regiment, 85th Infantry Division. On that fateful day near... Uh, 
Quinola, Italy, Chris Carr demonstrated extraordinary courage and valor by single-handedly attacking and capturing five German machine gun emplacements. His selfless, his selfless actions earned, earned under fire earned him the Medal of Honor a year later, November 1st, 1945, in recognition of his exceptional bravery and unwavering commitment to his fellow soldiers. After the war, Chris Carr continued to serve his country, reaching the rank of Sergeant First Class and bravely participating in the Korean War before eventually leaving the Army. In a, po in a poignant tribute to his legacy, a park nearby in Huntington Beach, his adopted home, now bears his name, serving as a lasting reminder of his courage and sacrifice. As we stand here today, in solemn presence of Westminster Memorial, surrounded by the echoes of history and the memories of the fallen, more than 6,000 veterans, it was pointed out to me earlier. It's worth noting that among these soldiers, including more than 100 Spanish-American War veterans laid to rest here, is a Civil War vet named, Char named Charles Chappelle. He holds a unique place in the annals of Orange County's history as the last Union veteran to be buried here, his final resting place a testament to his service and sacrifice. A resident of Long Beach, Chappelle's life is intertwined with the tumultuous events of the Civil War era. His journey led him to witness one of the most significant moments in American history, the surrender of General Robert E. Lee at Appomattox Port Courthouse. In 1949, Charles Chappelle found his final resting place here in Orange County, his, leg his legacy preserved in the hearts of minds of those who honor his memory. And so many other heroes right here where we sit today. Kenneth Worley was a Marine who exemplified unwavering bravery and devotion to his fellow Marines. On August 12, 1968, in the midst of the Vietnam War, Worley made the ultimate sacrifice by throwing himself on a grenade to shield his fellow soldiers from harm. His act of supreme courage and sacrifice saved the lives of several fellow Marines, demonstrating his extraordinary dedication to duty and camaraderie. Having enlisted in the Marines in 1967, Worley was deployed to the Republic of Vietnam early in 1968. It was during a mission to set up an ambush position in a hamlet of Quang Nam province that he encountered the enemy's grenade threat. Without hesitation, Worley leapt into action, heroically jumping on the grenade to protect his brothers in, brothers in arms and prevent further loss of life. We honor him today. He was actually given the Medal of Honor, the only Medal of Honor recipient in this cemetery. Another hero is Kazuo Masuda, whose journey to becoming a war hero was marked by personal and family sacrifices that underscored the challenges faced by Japanese Americans during World War II. On December 7, 1941, while Masuda was undergoing basic training, his father was among those unjustly arrested and interned, eventually being sent to a camp at Fort Missoula, Montana. The rest of his family was also swept up in the mass forced removal and incarceration of Japanese Americans on the West Coast, first being sent to camps at Jerome in Arkansas and then Gila River in Arizona. Despite the grave injustices inflicted upon his family and community, Masuda, along with three of his brothers, answered the call to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces. Their decision to defend a country that had turned its back on them speaks volumes about their courage, patriotism, and commitment to fighting for a better future for all Americans. Today, as we gather in this hallowed ground here at West Westminster Memorial Cemetery, we stand upon a historic landmark that echoes with the solemn sacrifices of generations past. This very site bears witness to the unwavering courage and selflessness of the fallen heroes who valiantly served their country in terms of turmoil and peace. From the bloodstained fields of the Civil War to the distant shores of the Spanish-American War, from the ravaged landscapes of both world wars to the unforgiving terrains of Korea, Vietnam, and conflicts of present day today, whether it be Afghanistan or the Gulf War, this sacred space stands as a testament to the profound spirit of service and dedication that resides in the hearts of those who gave all for the ideals we hold dear.
We must never forget the immeasurable debt we owe to all those who have served and continue to serve our nation. Their stories, their courage, and their ultimate sacrifices must always be honored and remembered. As we gather here today, let us carry forth the torch of their legacy, ensuring that the flame of freedom and valor burns brightly in our hearts and in our actions. May we always cherish the stories of our heroes. May we always strive to be worthy of the incredible legacy they have left us. Let us honor their memory, not just with words, but with deeds that uphold the ideals for which they fought. On this Memorial Day and every day, let us stand united in remembrance, in gratitude, and in solemn commitment to never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. One second. Okay. For the past 52 years, since uh, our first Memorial Day celebration in 1972, a special part of the program has been the presentation of wreaths by local organizations dedicated to honor our fallen heroes. If we're ready in the back, everybody should be near their wreath. Okay. And then you'll just come forward with it to place here uh, in front after I call out your name. We'll start with the Albert E. Schwab American Legion Post number 555. In honor of Don Stevenson with the U.S. Coast Guard, we have the American Legion Writers Chapter Number 555. The Vietnamese Coalition. And there's our missing man formation. I hope you were able to see that from where you sit. I, the Westminster Historical Society has a wreath.
Westminster Memorial Park Mortuary. say that we planned the timing of that. <laughs> Here's Gregory Pierce with Old Glory. <clears throat> I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop of the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutes of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident, I am arrogant, and I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my colors a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped, I am saluted, I am respected, I am revered, I am loved, and I am feared. I have fought every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hills, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy the deserts of Africa and the cane fields of the Philippines, the rice paddies and jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, the desert storm, and a score of places long forgotten by all except those who were with me. I was there. I led my soldiers and I followed them. I watched over them, and they loved me. I was on a small hill in Iwo Jima, and I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired. But my soldiers, they cheered me on, and I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled in the streets of other countries that I have helped set free. I have been soiled and burned and torn on the streets of my own country. And when it is by those with whom I have served in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space from my vantage point on the moon. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours, but my finest hours come when I am torn into strips to be used for bandages for my wounded comrades on the fields of battle. When I fly at half-mast to honor my soldiers, 
when I lie in the arms of a trembling, grieving mother or parent at the graveside of their fallen son or daughter. I am proud. My name is Old Glory, and dear God, long may I wave. I was just looking for the, the person that plays taps right now. Um, oh, there he is in place. Okay, if everyone could please stand for taps. Would you bow with me for a moment of blessing, please? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, on this a beautiful day that you have made, we pause to thank you for your constancy, your faithfulness to those who have offered all for this moment to actually be scheduled and occur. We thank you for your meaningfulness to our hearts today today as we look back across the years we thank you for your faithfulness to our brothers and sisters who gave all that we could indeed come together and remember them we ask your blessings on all hearts present going forward and we ask that we would remember the heritage of those who gave all and this we pray in your name and for your Back now. This concludes the 50th annual Memorial Day oops, Memorial Day service for Westminster Memorial Park. I would like to thank our speaker, Chris Epting, Pastor Randy Hill, as always, the Doves. How they know exactly when they come out is amazing to me. The Reef presenters, the Westminster High School Marching Band. Yeah. Our musicians, Gregory Pierce, yeah. Debbie Wheeler Ura, fans, yeah, Rob Weishner on keyboards, the amazing Rob Weishner, and our sign language interpreter, Delise Falkenstein. Wow, talk about a fan base. Okay. Please remember at 3 o'clock this afternoon to pause and observe the National Moment of Remembrance. Uh, right now, though, I think we're ready for this. Right now, do we have any veterans? <laughs> do we have any veterans or Gold Star family members here today with us? I would imagine there's a couple. So feel free to stand up and start heading towards the back where all the free food is at. I want you to be the first in line. Everybody let them through. We have free hot dogs, soda, and Italian ice for everybody here. And we'd like, uh, so enjoy the food, and if you need, ah, oh, here you go. Enjoy the food. If you need any help today, it, it, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Just look for our crew members wearing this shirt. Okay? 
If you see anybody with that shirt, they can help you find your vase. They can help you dig it out. They can even find you, uh, help you find a space uh, if you know the space number. So look for that shirt and you'll see it on several people that are working today. Is that? You have another song? Okay, I love this. This is gonna be a little special thing. So stay where you are, don't go for the food yet. No, go. Oh, you're gonna sing something as they're going for the food. Walkout music. <laughs> Exit music. Everybody, thank you so much for coming. Have a great day. To the prairie